We are here with the coolest white guy, you know, Jerry. And today we have a special, awesome video for you guys. I'm super excited about this. Um, so huge, huge thank you to Legend Suspension for sponsoring this video. Uh, they were kind enough and nice enough to send me out a brand new pair of Revo A's, which we're gonna put on the uh, 2015 Dyna right behind this. And I am super, super excited about this. Um, so they were even cool enough and nice enough to send me out this cool sweatshirt here. I got the matching hat to go with it as well. And I got a t-shirt inside, I'm bringing the t-shirt out. Also in the box, we got some stickers here. So we're gonna put these on the on the wall, the sticker wall. All right, so here are the pairs of Revo Ace that we have. Um, they come in different colors as well. So they come um, in this alloy color, they come in all black. And then they also come in gold, which is honestly my favorite, but I wasn't gonna put gold on the bike because that's, um, that's not the route I'm trying to take. I'm trying to keep a nice little clean look alloy chrome and just white and black that's what i'm sticking with but these are really really nice man i like it um so we do have the uh adjustables right here so we can um stiffen up the uh the, the ride and everything um i didn't go with the piggybacks because the piggybacks is just basically almost the same thing it's just going to give you a little bit more of travel um but these are more than enough these are fine all right guys, so we're first gonna start, we're gonna loosen this ball up and then we're gonna move down and do this one and then the whole shock should just come uh, right out. All right, so now that we got the top one off, we're gonna do the bottom one. So we got our first shock off. Just to give you guys a comparison side to side of uh, the size of the shocks. We got about two to three inches higher. The ones I went with are 13 inch. Um, so it's definitely gonna give the bike a lot more comfort and that travel and that gap that I want to have between the fender and the tire. All right guys, so we got our first shock right here which we're gonna put on. As you can see here, this sticker just notifies you and it tells you that this goes against the bike. So this is the right side right here we're gonna do. We got the preload on the bottom. What we're gonna do first is gonna, we're gonna put the spacer that they provide for us in there, put the shock through, put the washer that they provide for us as well, right over that. Then the uh, OEM washer that came with the bike and the OEM ball at the end. So that's gonna secure the whole shock on top. Right before we do that, we're gonna uh, put some Loctite on this. What we're gonna do right now is just we're gonna put this on here for now so we can just hold in place. Afterwards, when we put the other one on, We'll go ahead and put some Loctite on both sides. So now that we have jacked up the bike, we are going to take the bottom bolt. I already put the uh, washer that they provide for us on there. So we're going to put the bolt through here and we have the spacer that they provide for us on this side. Now we can put it through onto the bike. What we're going to do first is just put a little dab of Loctite on there. Because, you know. Because this bike vibrate. Because the Dyna, they vibrate lots and lots and lots a little loctite on top now we can start tightening everything back up now so we'll start at the bottom so what you want to see after you install a shock is that it maneuvers like this if you see that that means that it's installed properly it has enough space on top to move and enough space in the bottom to move and nothing's interfering with the shock uh, neither on top or on the bottom right here. So I got that gap that I really wanted from the beginning right there. As you can see before, it didn't look like that at all. It looks so nice and clean. All right, so as you can see there, it does sag a lot right now, but I need to take it out for a ride and let the whole shock um, find its place. Um, and then play around with the dampening because I got to see exactly how, how much dampening I want. 
Um, like I said before, it's really easy. You, ju you could just self-adjust it in the bottom right here. Uh, make it stiffer, make it softer, whatever you like. But once I take it around for a little while, um, it'll find its proper place of where it's supposed to be at. And um, then we're good to roll, man. Like I said before, you'll know that it's properly installed when you see this type of movement side to side. That's what you need to see. You don't want anything hinging or uh, pinching the bolt right on top. Um, we did use Loctite. We did use the washers and spacers that they provided for us. And that's about it. It was a pretty easy job, man. So that was the install. I took it out for a ride right now. I was able to play around with the damp and everything like that. Um, I was able to adjust the shock in the bottom. So I got it up to like three and a half inches, just for a bit more stiffening because before I felt like it was just like, um, too soft. it was too soft. It was just, uh, I had too much rebound. So I left the setting at three. I tried it at four. It felt like it was too, too stiff. So you're able to adjust this by hand from the bottom. So I went up, um, right when we first started it was what? I got two and a half. Two and it half was inches. almost two and a half. So I brought it up to like three and a half inches. So it gives me a little, uh, how do I explain it? Stiffer spring. Yeah, it's just a stiffer spring. It doesn't, you know, go down as fast. Um, and it feels great. Um, and if, if I want from now, I could just keep playing around with it. I go up and down. I could change the dampening in the bottom as well. Overall, it's a pretty cool shock. So I highly, highly recommend it. Once again, a huge, huge shout out to Legend Suspension for sending these uh, amazing shocks out to me. All right, Jerry, so what do you think about the whole install and the whole process? Easy, hard, or what? No, it's pretty easy. The hardest thing is jacking up the bike and keeping it straight on the jack stand. Yeah, I kind of didn't have, I mean, I bought a lift, but it was it's like- not the right one. It's not the right lift, so we had to kind of play around with it, maneuver a bit. But besides that, the install is very, fairly easy. Like I always tell you guys, I'm not a mechanic. I'm just okay with my hands and I have my uh, helper right here, so. I'm not a mechanic either, I'm okay with my hands. <laughs> I'm just okay with my hands, so it's, that's, that's basically it. I should have a video up in the next two days as well. I'm gonna be doing a, a full in-depth review on the on the lowrider as well. A lot of people have been asking for that. And then after I get my bike back, just give you guys an update. So I haven't got my uh, 2020 lowrider ass back from the dealership. I should have it hopefully about Wednesday, hopefully, because I'm off that day and I could just go pick it up. Um, but like I said before, it's getting the, the risers installed on it. So as soon as I got that bike in here, we're gonna do a comparisons and a few other cool stuff like that. So if that's the type of content you are into and you wanna watch, you're definitely in the right place, go ahead, subscribe, hit that bell button so I notify you anytime I upload any type of new content. And if you guys wanna go ahead and shop um, for these Revo A's, I'm gonna put the description down below. You guys can check out the website. Like always, let the force be with you. I renamed my bike. Her name is R2 now. Ride safe and enjoy the ride, baby. Peace. Peace.